a researcher dug up um, that something called Fisher information loss is a better alternative than differential privacy. So thanks to Serge for uh, digging that one up. Do you want to dig into what that means? Sure. Yeah. I don't know about better. I mean, it's definitely different. Um, you know, I don't want to upset all the differential privacy uh, fans in your, <laughs> your audience. Um, so what this is about, like what we just talked about is cryptographic uh, security or cryptographic privacy, right? So here we do computations together and we don't change the, the computations or the data or the results in any way. But, but all the computations are encrypted, right? And so even the end result, right, of um, like the, the computations that we did on your 12 are encrypted, right? And so at some point, we need to open up that result, right? Like we, we will need to decrypt something in order to be able to see like what the result is, right? Mm -hmm. And at that point, there is information leaking, right? Like information about sort of the training data that went in and so on. And so that's where you want to use uh, statistical privacy, so things like differential privacy, to sort of measure and control the amount of information leakage that, um, that happens there. And so there, the sort of like standard way of doing that is through differential privacy, which is basically an approach that, that looks at, um, can I, if I have a data point that was used to um, if I have a, a data point, can I answer the question, was this data point used in the computation that I just performed, um, which is called membership inference. So like, was this data point part of like the data that was used to, you know, train our deep network or, uh, or sort of whatever it is we were, uh, uh, we were computing, uh, uh, together. And that is is an interesting definition, but it's also a little bit weird because it sort of assumes that you already have the data points that we cared about keeping private, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but if we cared about keeping it private, like why, why did you already have it, right? And so there's a question on like, is that sort of the right formulation of statistical privacy? And so what we did in Fisher information loss is we proposed an alternative definition of statistical privacy that's um, that says more like, hey, if I give you, for example, the trained model weights, can you infer, like, can you back out any of the training examples? So, like, can you reconstruct those directly from uh, from the model weights or sort of from the the parameters or the outputs of the, the computation that you've just performed? Mm -hmm. But we're not assuming that you have that data points already, um, and so this is a different type of. Um, uh, of sort of attack on the privacy mechanism, which is called re data reconstruction. Um, and Fisher information law sort of provides a, uh, provides sort of a strict guarantee on your ability to do that type of data reconstruction in the same way that differential privacy provides a strict guarantee on your inability to do membership inference. And so like there are two different um, different sort of definitions of, of statistical privacy. Yeah, yeah. And people should use the one that's like most suitable for like the, the privacy use case that they care about. Right, right, right. Okay, uh, very cool. Um, and yeah, nice for you to be able to get in, deep in the weeds uh, there for a bit on these differences um, in statistical privacy options. Um, so it sounds like, so with the, uh, with the Fisher information loss, um, it's, it, we might want to use that in a scenario where, uh, we're, we're less worried about, uh, being sure about some specific data point from the training data set, uh, or, uh, like it's more about using the model weights to reconstruct. Um, it's it's essentially about like protecting against a different concern and sort of the, the reason that is important is because in statistical privacy, there's always a a trade-off between privacy, sort of how much privacy are you able to guarantee, and sort of what is the utility. So sort of how much of a price do you pay in terms of like the the uh, the correctness sort of of the app, right? right? Because right, in right. practice, how you guarantee the privacy is you add sort of random noise in a certain, in a sort of very specific way. And so like you could do this, for example, when you make a prediction, right? So like, let's say you have an image recognition model you make a prediction on, you know, sort of like, is this a dog or a cat? And now you can ask the question, how much can I learn about the training data from this prediction, right? And I can reduce 
the amounts that you can learn by adding noise to my prediction, right? But now my prediction gets worse, obviously, right? right? So I use, uh, I lose some utility. Right. So there's a fundamental trade-off there, right? And so um, the that's why it matters, sort of like what is your definition of of privacy? Because what feature information laws will be able to give you is a better trade-off. Um, of privacy versus utility. Um, if you feel that sort of like the feature information laws definition of privacy, so this data reconstruction definition is sufficient for you, right? Like is sort of sufficient to feel, you know, to feel good about like the results that you're that you're sharing uh, with the world.